If a kitty was wrapped up in a pretty bow and gifted to your family this holiday season, experts tell us there are ways to keep your curious kitten in peak health for Christmases to come. Ronnie joins us with more in this week's Pet Doc. Hey, thank you so much, Stephanie. This week we conclude our series with Dr. Brandon Bebout on what we need to know when bringing home puppies and kittens. Although some of the information is similar to that of bringing home a puppy, cats come with different decisions you'll have to make when you spay or neuter. Yeah, and so cats definitely very different than dogs when it comes to spay and neuter. Um, we are doing these guys much earlier. Um, we've seen less uh, detrimental health effects um, on, on doing them. Obviously at the shelter, you know, we're doing them eight, nine weeks, which is, which is early for an owned cat, but obviously at a shelter situation, uh, we want to get those guys out into their homes as soon as possible. That way more can come in, and so they can save lives that way by, by, by neutering and spaying them early. Um, as far as owned cats that come in at eight weeks, you know, we'll vaccinate them eight, 12, and 16 weeks um, with their dewormers, and then usually at that 16 to 24 weeks, um, we will get our neuter or spay done. Dr. Bebout says cats have one goal in life and we want to prevent it. The older a, a cat gets, we do not want, want them to reach sexual maturity. Um, they are very different than dogs um, and they have one goal in life and that is to get pregnant um, or reproduce. And so, um, you know, especially if you have an indoor outdoor cat, um, if you're going to have um, an intact cat, male or female, it will be reproducing if it's outside, if it's at sexual maturity. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. To help keep the stray cat population down, Dr. Brandon Bebout wants you to know when cats are ready to reproduce. Uh, females are induced ovulators, which is pretty rare. Um, I want to say ferrets, rabbits, um, llamas are induced ovulators, and so what that means is a male comes to the neighborhood and they're going to ovulate and so they're going to be ripe for reproduction and it happens fast and it happens a lot and that's why we have so many cats at our shelters. Dr. Bebout says preventative care is similar to dogs but even more important because of their grooming and hunting habits. It's very very similar um, to, to dogs and in fact even more important because where our tapeworm comes from is actually from a flea. They'll ingest the flea that's on their back um, and then about you know, weeks to days later, so they're going to have a they're going to have a tapeworm problem, and so it's just one of those things where um, you know we want to keep up with that because again, these guys are curious, they're into getting into trouble, and again, they're cleaning all areas of them, and so if eggs are sitting on them, they're just reingesting them, um, and then they're going to get reinfected, and so um, very very easy for cats to get endoparasites. Um, they are out. Uh, a lot of cats are out hunting um, birds and and little reptiles and rodents and things like that that carry a lot of parasites and a lot of those uh, smaller animals that they're hunting um, can potentially be intermediate hosts of parasites. Cats can very easily reinfect themselves so Dr. Bebout wants you to know some possible risks from not treating potential parasites. We know that they need all the nutrition they can get as they grow and we have seen plenty of kittens um, that are that have very very little red blood cells because of fleas or very very little red blood cells um, because of hookworms. And even to the point where these guys need blood transfusions from fleets. Um, and so it just shows you how small these kittens can be um, and how important that preventative is. Another preventative step in keeping your felines happy and healthy is properly vaccinating them. Dr. Bebout says this can be the difference between life and death. As we get into vaccinations, um, one of the most important ones um, is feline leukemia. And so um, obviously rabies is very, very important for our own public health um, because it is a zoonotic disease, which means it can go to humans, and we know that. Um, all mammals can spread uh, rabies, and so that's number one, of course. But feline leukemia um, is an important one, especially if our kitties go inside or outside. Um, we lose too many kitties every year to feline leukemia. It is a, is a pretty nasty disease. Um, it can cause a lot of different problems. Um, feline leukemia kittens or cats are 60 times more likely to develop lymphoma um, which is a cancer, um, and, and we're not seeing this, you know, in 12, 13-year-old cats. We're seeing this in 8, 9-month-old cats, lymphoma. Dr. Bebout wants to help keep your new pet in your life as long as possible. Taking these steps now with your vet will ensure a happy and perfect life with you. Next week, we'll be back with Dr. Brandon to talk about oral care for your pets. Stephanie? Uh, Ronnie, thank you. And we have more information on our pet doc segments on our website, nebraska.tv, and our YouTube page.